Dota is a game full of counterpicks. Sometimes there are counterpicks that make one aspect of the game a little bit harder for somebody else, but then there are some that make the game almost unplayable for the person getting countered. Let's take a look at five of those biggest counterpicks that we have in the game right now. This is the second video I've made on this topic, so if you want to check out the five that we talked about last time, check that video out in the description below, and let's get going. First up, let's talk about Spectre versus Tinker. Some heroes have one glaring weakness that they really have a hard time dealing with, and Tinker is for sure one of these heroes. Your entire game on Tinker is spent kind of playing keep away and not letting enemies gap close on you while you spam out long range damage, but Spectre just throws that option kind of out the window. Haunt not only gives Spectre a free chance to get on top of Tinker, but it also just reveals where Tinker may be hiding while also canceling his blink dagger, letting the rest of Spectre's team have a far easier time jumping him. The one saving grace for Tinker is the fact that Haunt has a long cooldown, but with Spectre's Aghanim set giving you free one target haunt on a much lower cooldown, Tinker's life has only gotten harder. He has gotten Defense Matrix somewhat recently, which can help him a bit by maybe blocking enough damage to keep his blink from getting cancelled, but a farm Spectre will still just chew right through that. The best way to play this matchup as Spectre is by communicating with any other jump heroes in your team, like a Ricky, Monkey King, or Puck, and if you have them scout while you farm and then just haunting in when they find the Tinker, that's your ideal playstyle. If you're playing this matchup from the Tinker end, you need to prioritize defensive items that can help you survive the haunt jump. Items like Sheepstick, E-Blade, or Yules all work for different situations. If you see the enemy team pick Spectre, maybe consider picking Necro or Viper instead. Both these mids don't really mind getting jumped by Spectre and can deal massive damage to her even if she is 6 slotted. Before we go into the next one, take a second to scroll down and let me know in the comments what your favorite or least favorite counter pick is. And while you're down there, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Next up, we're going to look at Dawnbreaker versus Nyx Assassin. This one, for the most part, is just more annoying than actually unplayable, but it's still an extremely effective counter to both support and core Dawnbreaker. The main reason for this counter is how effective Carapace shuts down all of Dawnbreaker's spells. First off, you are easily able to Carapace one of the first two swipes of Starbreaker, which will just stun her and cancel before the stun actually comes out. And then taking a look at Celestial Hammer, it leaves a dot trail on the ground, which gives you a free stun whenever you want. You can just Carapace and walk right on top of that. And finally, once again, you can just cancel her out whenever by walking into the AoE with Carapace. On. And this is the really big one. You could just kind of leave Dawnbreaker stranded on the other side of the map because she expects to be able to just alt in to connect on the fight. If you're playing as Nyx in this matchup, you should focus on canceling the Dawn alt if you see that she's playing far from her team. But if she's playing with her team, then you can set up free stuns on her by carapacing either Starbreaker or Hammer. If you're playing as Dawnbreaker in this matchup, you kind of need to shift your playstyle a bit to not rely on your alt to bring you to the fights. You more so have to rely on staying with your team and using your alt later in fights after Nyx pops Carapace. Also, be careful of using Starbreaker before you finish your shards so it doesn't get cancelled. If your matchup against a Nyx, consider picking Slardar if you're looking to play a core, or Lion if you're looking to play a support. Both of these heroes have instant lockdown that can just kind of shut down the Nyx before he's able to Carapace at all. For number three today, we're going to be looking at OD versus Troll Warlord. Unlike the last two matchups, which really focus on one aspect of a counter, OD has a ton of tools that shut Troll down. Let's go down the list. Sanity's Eclipse will always do massive damage to Troll, since he's a hero with such a low base mana pool. Plus, there aren't really any items that raise your mana pool that Troll's willing to buy. On top of his already low mana pool, if you get Astral Imprisoned on this hero and lose even more mana, after a couple casts of any of your axes, you might just run out. Everyone knows how exploitable Troll Alt is, but Astral truly is one of the best spells at shutting Battle Trance down. You can imprison the Troll or whoever he's targeting and effectively just wait out the entire time around his alt while he's doing no damage. This gets even worse if Odie gets an Aghanim Scepter and can actually stall out the entire duration. You may point out that Odie always has a hard time when enemies can sec on top of him, which Troll is decent at, and that is true, but Troll's main way of sticking on enemies is by rooting them, and Odie is a hero that doesn't mind at all to build a Force Staff, which is just going to be a complete counter to these roots and just let him escape a lot of the time. If you're playing Odie into Troll, just stick back and save allies from Troll Alt, and take note of how much damage you can actually do with your ult to him. There's a lot of times where Troll won't expect to just lose 80% of his HP randomly, and you can find some quick kills on him before he's even able to ult. As Troll, you really need to focus on getting your BKB early, because without it, there's almost no way that you can stand in fights versus Zodi. Past that, you have to be careful when you do ult, and try to align it with CC from your teammates. If you see the other team picking OD, consider playing carries like TA or Lycan. Both of these options have a great time dealing with OD's damage, and have a very easy time getting on top of him and killing him. Next up, let's look at how Mars counters Drow Ranger. And this is another multi-faceted counter. The first aspect of this is how Drow is another hero who doesn't like enemies getting on top of her, and Mars with Arena and Blink Dagger can easily jump her and lock her down. Alternatively, Mars can also spear Drow out of position and put her in the middle of Mars' team. All repositioning abilities are very strong against Drow, and Spear is one of the best of those. Past that, Arena can also keep Drow out of fights by putting her on the outside. She won't be able to do auto attack damage into the arena, so your entire team can just sit in there and kind of be safe for a bit. Another reason why Mars is great against Drow is because of Bulwark 
Bulwark acts as a percent damage mitigation, which is far more effective against Drow's alt than armor is. So Mars can tank a lot more hits from Drow than most other tanky heroes can. And then if Drow decides to hit Mars' teammates instead, he can toggle Bulwark on and eat a lot of the damage, keeping his teammates safe. It's just overall very tough for Drow to do her job when there's a Mars on the other team. If you're playing Mars against Drow, the main things to focus on are using Arena to lock her down or zone her out during fights, and to soak damage for your teammates with Bulwark. If you're playing this matchup as a Drow, it's important to make sure that you don't waste your BKB. For a lot of fights, this will be kind of the only time that you're able to do damage. You may also want to focus on getting more defensive items early to help offset the Mars jump. Instead of Drow, consider picking PL or Lone Druid into Mars. Both these carriers do well in lane against Mars and don't have to worry about Arena nearly as much. Now let's round out today's list by looking at Meepo and how he counters Anti-Mage. I was tempted to not include this matchup on the list since Meepo isn't exactly a counter pick that most players can just whip out when they see an AM, but it's just so punishing that I couldn't justify not mentioning it. The base of this counter is Meepo's ability to use Earthbind to lock down AM for an incredibly long time, and the fact that Meepo beats AM to a lot of power spikes. First of all, let's talk about Net. This is one of the few soft CC spells in the game that can get over AM's elusiveness, mainly due to how it can go through counter spell. Secondly, because you have multiple casts of this spell, you can catch AM again, even if he mantis out of the first one. And finally, because Net is AoE, so even if the AM does mantis out, out, you can catch the real one and the illusions all at once. All of this makes AM have to play very afraid of Meepo, but unlike other AM counters, he can't just be safe by avoiding the part of the map where the counter is showing. Meepo has the advantage of being able to be multiple places at once, making it so AM has to live in constant fear, which removes his ability to split push. Besides all of this, Meepo still farms faster than AM does and can reach important item timings a bit faster, leading to Meepo being able to take over the game before AM's impact really can be felt. To play this matchup as AM, you do have to rely on playing around defensive supports more than you usually do. You also need to make sure that you play around vision to not let the Meepo sneak up on you. As Meepo, it's important to keep the pressure on AM and not let him extend into aggressive parts of the map. If you see Meepo on the other team, consider picking something like Sven or Monkey King as carry instead. Both of these carries hit item timings more similar to Meepo and have more favorable matchups when forced to man fight. While you're here, let me know of any more counters that I might have missed and check out either of these videos on screen now.